they push this aside and there's so many other things that take the attention of families, they take the attention of communities and cities and, and whatnot. And I listened. Boy, somebody's alarm going on. Yeah. <laughs> Is it Ben? Did you leave my Did you leave any money out, Ron? <laughs> Praise God. Uh, I listened to a little bit of news today, and, and some people don't listen to any news because it's sometimes sort of depressing. But I listened to a gentleman today that I was probably in his 60s, and he, he's a Jew. And he was saying on the news broadcast that, you know, he, he, he said, I do not understand people that get upset because of the displays of nativity scenes and people saying Merry Christmas. He said, I do not celebrate Christmas. He said, we celebrate a different holiday. He said, I'm a Jew. He said, we celebrate it differently. But I'm not offended because people want to celebrate Christmas. And if somebody says Merry Christmas to me, he said, I'm going to say Merry Christmas back. He said, this is in the States. He said, Christmas Day is a national holiday. He said, I celebrate it as a national holiday with everybody else. He said, why people are getting so Bent out of shape because somebody saying Merry Christmas is, is way past me. He said, there's people even telling us that we should be offended because we're Jews and we don't celebrate Merry Christmas. You should take all this stuff away. He said, I've never seen such an hour and a time of society that we're living in right now. He said, somebody's making a lot of this stuff up because he said the majority of people are not offended. They're not offended at all. And so I thought it was quite an interview from a gentleman that doesn't even celebrate Christmas. But he said, it's a national holiday. I celebrate a national holiday with everybody else. And he said, it doesn't offend me at all. The strangest thing to me is when it offends a Christian. <laughs> I guess I kind of questioned that. Why do they call themselves a Christian if you can't say Merry Christmas? Anyway, that's just... I'll get off that. I'm going to read out of Luke chapter 2. And we're going to go to verse 8. If, uh, maybe they'll put it up on the wall and you can follow along. Luke chapter 2. I'm going to start at verse 8. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you was born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us go now even to even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. They came with haste, found Mary and Joseph, and the baby lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. Now listen to this. And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus. That was the establishment of the name on the eighth day of circumcision. Which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And when the days of her purification according to the law of Moses was accomplished, 
they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. <coughs> that, that sounds important, doesn't it? <coughs> and as it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that openeth the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. And to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout, waiting <coughs> for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. There was something special about this man. He was waiting for something that was important. We have in this scripture text a fulfillment of the word of God that started clear back in Genesis chapter 3. Every mother that ever had a son in Israel wondered, will this be the Messiah? Will this be the Christ? Will this be the one that will deliver us and set us free? Will this be the one that will take away my bitterness? Will this be the one that will take away my loneliness? Will this be the one that will give me joy and peace in my heart? Will this be the one? That's why they called every male child holy to the Lord. This man was waiting for this to happen. And he was asking the Lord, he was talking to God, and he said, God, I'd like to be alive when this child is born. I'd like to be alive when this child is born. Verse 26, and it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Wow, that's pretty wild. We got a lot of events going on here now. We got we got shepherds on the hillside that's all of a sudden seeing a satellite picture of angels filling the heavens. Something they had never seen before. Something they had never even maybe thought of. And they watched as a host of angels appeared and told them there's a child born down here in Bethlehem. He's going to be in a manger. You better go down and check it out. This is the Christ. This is the one. And these angels were worshiping God and praising God. It was a great event. It was a special event. It was an event that people were watching and waiting for, but yet it still took most of them by surprise. It took most of them by surprise. But this man had been told, you will be alive. You will see the Lord's Christ. You will see the Messiah when it happens. Uh, it wasn't me, honest. <laughs> it was Amanda. Praise God. You're going to see the Lord's Christ. This is something you've prayed, you've sought, you've wanted. I wonder how many people in this room here tonight would really love to see the Lord. That that is your desire. Even in this season, with everything so busy, and the kids want toys and all these things and events happening. Is it in your heart to really see the Lord, to want to see who He is? This man desired it. God said, well, you'll not die. You're going to see it. In verse 27, Doug will like this verse. And He came by the Spirit into the temple. He didn't know it was a special day. He didn't know this is going to be the day. He didn't, he didn't understand. It was just like any other day. He'd probably get up and, and uh, had some uh, bacon and eggs. No, he was a Jew. He didn't have no bacon and eggs. <laughs> he had some lamb chops. He started his day the same as he started any other day. It was a day like any other day. It was a day that was just going to pass. and Maybe he was going to go to the temple. Maybe he wasn't going to go to the temple. But yet there was a promise in his heart that had given, been given to him many, many years ago. Do you think for one moment that God will allow the promises that he's given to you to just slip by and let you miss it? No. That's not who God is. No. If he's made promises in your life, I want to tell you that God will do the same thing today as he did over 2,000 years ago. He will lead you by the Spirit. You might not even know that it's the Spirit. But the Spirit of God will come into your life and He will lead you to the place that you need to be wherever it is that Jesus is going to show up in your life. Amen. 
That's the beauty of Christmas. That's the beauty of what we celebrate. Jesus Christ was born. He showed up in my life many years ago. It happened on a Sunday morning. And he walked by the door of my heart. And the Spirit of God opened up my heart. And I recognized and saw him. And he ministered and came into my life. God's Spirit is still alive today. And it is still drawing people that maybe they don't even understand. But God's Spirit is still alive. Verse 27 again. And he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, then took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said... This man came over, the Spirit led him, came over to these parents. That's what it says, they were parents. He came over, he took the child in his arms, and he began to say something. Lord, now let us. Honest, it's not me. See, he was right back at the same seat. <laughs> Lord, now let us, thou thy servant, depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people. There comes for the majority of these in here tonight a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. Hallelujah. Isn't that amazing? You know, we, we look at it and, and time passes us by, doesn't it? 2018, maybe a lot of us just passed by real fast. But I want to tell you something. We're getting closer and closer every day to the coming of the Lord. Amen. Jesus is getting ready to come back. I don't want that to pass me by. I want to slow down enough in that area of my life. I want to slow down enough in the area of my heart. I want to slow down enough in my mind. To be able to recognize when Jesus Christ is showing up. When he gets ready to come by my door, he gets ready to come by your door. I want to be slowed down enough to be able to know in the sea. I'd like to be like the wise man. I didn't read that part tonight. But some of you know that part. This happened at a later date. Wise men followed a star. And that star was leading them to where Jesus was laying. You see, I can guarantee you something in here tonight. That God has not changed over 2,000 years. And if you need to know, if you need to understand, God will send something by, someone by, that will lead you to where Jesus is. Do you really want to know him tonight? See, this is not just any other night. This is not any other night. This is a night where you can pick him up in your arms. And say, I have seen the salvation of the Lord. I have seen him. He's come to change our lives, hasn't he? He's come to change our hearts. Would you stand with me together once more, Sister Sarah, would you come back? Amen. Would you bow your heads with me as we pray? Lord Jesus, I thank you for your touch and your presence tonight. I thank you for the word of truth, Lord, that is here. Lord, as many times as I have read this scripture text, it has never gotten old. Lord, it has kept fresh and has stayed fresh. Some of us in this room, Lord, have had those experiences where the Lord has showed up, the angels of the Lord have showed up. And we've had a mighty deliverance and your hand has touched our life and has brought about change. Lord, and life has gone by and time has gone by. And some have forgotten. Lord, some have let it slip from out of their grasp. Lord, and has slipped the realization 
of the importance of what it is.